Oh, and we're back again. I just, two seconds. Okay, basically a huge lorry just arrived at my place and dropped off a transfer box for my car because the transfer box I've got in it right now is El Busto. And also it's, I bought, because I went on eBay and I bought um, a spares and repairs from another Ford Explorer. And it had its, um, like they're not bike racks, they are bike racks, but they're different, they're curved. And I want to put lights on there so it looks like the actual car. Because uh, I can't put the glass roof. I don't even think that's legal if I was to make that sort of change. Um, it wouldn't be road legal anyway, so I couldn't actually drive it around. And uh, getting the transfer box a good one would be really helpful, so. That's what I've been doing. And we've got so much packaging left. I'm looking down here. There's so many toys, so much merchandise, and it is awesome. So I'm gonna open this thing, which looks very crudely done, but let's, oh, fingers crossed, it'll be awesome. So we have lots of newspaper. I'm told, you know, when I get newspaper like this, I'm half tempted to read it. So the first thing out of the box is bubble wrap. Yay! Celophysis, one of the best toys, or one of the best cheap toys that came out at the time. It is blowing amazing. You get two of them, you get an awesome card to go with it. Not only that, but these are wireframe. So as a kid, when I first got these and I wanted to get into animation, they, they've got wire inside them so you can bend them and they'll stay in that position. So if you want to do stop frame animation, you could slowly take a picture of bending their neck and then it, as you played it back, it would go without you touching it. It would look awesome. And on the back, you can see um, them posing it with Dennis Nedry. And uh, it, it says, bend neck and tail into fighting positions. Make him grab the human to recreate an attack. And I gotta say, these are awesome. They are a little bit fragile, as in, uh, their paint wears quite easy because they are rubber and you're going to be rubbing your fingers on them quite a lot. Um, but articulation's great. Level of detail on the limbs, on the, I know you can't really see it too clearly, but on the fingers and everything is amazing. The sculpt is sped, no expense, it's amazing. So this is a true treat to have. So we have the Celiophysis, what could be argued as the second best Dilophosaur toy to ever exist. And these are in English, so collectors, this is for you. <laughs> it comes with its card which says spit a dinner. And as you can see, there's a man being groped and um, kissed by a Dilophosaur. So what's cool is you can drown this Dilophosaur. Drown it and then it sort of hiccups the uh, water. <laughs> Not really, it's supposed to spray its acid. Really, you could put it in green, add some green dye to some water and then it'll spray out green. Oh, ooh, I will say the only drawback to this one is the fact that its front arms are not articulated. They are screwed in and I'm not too sure why. They probably could have done some something there, but uh, it, it's all right. Again, just like the Celiophysis, it's not as durable. So if you've got kids that really like to play hard, then you're gonna get um, possible, you're gonna get wear on the paint job. Um, and the tail is actually like really uh, stretchy rubber. It's very springy. So you may see a lot of these models uh, that are second hand that have that bit of the tail missing because little kids pull it and it'll snap off. So, but it's awesome. The paint job is amazing. Um, and the way it works is also amazing. Its legs are articulated. And can, I, can we just take a moment to just admire the packaging on this thing? It is amazing, nothing. Jurassic World had good one, like this This rivals the Jurassic World Dilophosaur. I gotta say, probably Jurassic World Dilophosaur is better because it is electronic and fires like a projectile, that's pretty cool. It's um, it's frill is also nice, it's it's kind of cool, but at the same time, it's, it's always on. Uh, and this one doesn't have it, so it does spray, but doesn't have the frill, so that's a minus point for it. But look at it, look at the trees, this sort of gradient from yellow, orange to red. It just, it feels hot. It feels like Costa Rica and the trees sort of just over this sunset and the humidity, you can feel it all in here. And it is just truly a marvelous like um, packaging. I love it, I'm sorry. You will not get better than this. So we have Celiophysis, Dilophosaur, Dimetrodon. Yeah, that's right. 
we're talking Unicorn Wizard before it was a wizard. Um, and this is the first in the series of dinosaurs. Instructions. Uh, press on left rear leg to open and close jaw. So you get a nice little diorama of it there, opening its jaw. And it does snap it, like snaps it closed. And it again has an awesome little movie card thing that was commissioned, like art of, I think Tim and Alan Grant sort of stumbling upon a Dimetrodon. But what's cool is this didn't feature in the movie at all. And Dimetrodon, as we now know, is not a dinosaur. It was actually predated the dinosaurs by a couple of million years, actually. But again, packaging phenomenal. The, um, the color on the plastic is clear. It hasn't aged at all, which is beautiful. The Coelophysis, if I put them close, has sort of um, greened, yellowed. But the Dilophosaur and this Dimetrodon haven't. For some odd reason, there's loads more Dimetrodons on sale on the internet than there are other dinosaurs. There are virtually no raptors because everybody opened those and they're very rare. Um, Dilophosaur, Dimetrodon is the most common for some odd reason and I think this model is fantastic. Its frill is lovely detailed, the sculpt on its body is great, it's got a nice little action feature and it's a cool model. I, like, I don't understand why Dimetrodon is so common on the internet. So that's why I snapped a lot of them up. Oh, we have a little one here. We have a little one. I'm gonna open you. Stab! Oh, it's, oh, that's right, it's a chart, like, for the shop, we need labels on these for prices. And this is the charger. The actual labeler itself does not come with a charger. So you have to buy it separately. So, these two are mugs. Jurassic, sorry, I keep on going Jurassic World. No, The Lost World mugs. They were free mug. I think these were the things that if you sent off the tokens when you bought a, um, I, I don't know if it's on the, the actual action figures, if it's on the bottom. No, it isn't. It's not on the action figures, but on the glider pack, it was if you cut off here, you get three points. And with those, you could send to a company or send to an address. And then if you got had enough, you would get a mug. Now, these are sealed, I think. Oh, no, they're, no, they're not actually. They're not sealed. They have been opened just to look at them, but they got a styrofoam, so we're not going to take them out completely. But this mug, I actually have right from when I won it, this one. Um, the other one, not so much. It's it's more sort of cool looking where you got greens, different shades and white and black. Whereas this one's nice and colorful. You get a little picture of the raptor, some pteranodons flying by and some more raptors around the bottom. And these ones are really good. Free mug! I get the feeling that if I was to sell these, people would be like, oh, it's free and just take it. But well, it's not. <laughs> They're collectors, I think, these ones. So, um, I'm gonna put them there because they're quite they're quite nice. In fact, actually, I'm just gonna put them free mug on, on each side. <laughs> mug means face in English. This, these are the Jurassic Park 3 action figures. Um, you get a little diorama on the back of uh, Billy, uh, Amanda, was, it, was she called Amanda? I think she was called Amanda Kirby. And Alan Grant, Alan Grant, like, for some reason, this is actually a product from Hasbro. No word of a lie, there it is. And we do have them with characters, with a little dinosaur and weapons. Now these, for some odd reason, go for ridiculous prices on the internet, more so than the original Jurassic Park. And I think that's because they're rarer. The level of detail on the sculpts is actually something to be admired, which makes me ask the question that why didn't they do this for Jurassic World when these are pretty baller? Uh, so that is the military general, generic mili mil mil military general, Alan Grant, with his neckerchief, a raptor, a capturing metal gear. So it is taking sort of what was in the past and sort of improving on it. Background is exactly the same. Dr. Alan Grant and Velociraptor, and then some different, uh, what you call it, different uh, tran languages. That's the one I'm thinking of. So again, lovely detail. Um, the thing is with these figures actually, they stand in weird poses. So they have to be, they're not standing like they were generically with the other ones where they just stand straight like that and then you can pose the arms and stuff. They stand like maybe bent, where like one leg will be bent and then like, so they'll be leaning over or they'll be like doing a pose, which is really awkward, especially because they are a lot smaller than the original uh, Kenner models which makes playability with them a bit weird when you've got a midget Alan Grant. 
Um, like for example, tell you what, we'll use a Lost World for comparison. Um, so Eddie Carr, which is basically an Alan Grant, and you can already see the size difference. I mean, uh, packaging as well. It, oh, it just brings back childhood. It really does looking at these. But you can see the size difference. Like the gun itself is as big as Alan Grant, but then again, the gun here is as big as Alan Grant. So. Uh, I don't know how he's gonna hold that because it must be huge. Here, yeah, this one is actually really, really cool. This is Billy. Is it Billy Brennan? Yeah, Billy Brennan. Brennan, something. One of two. Anyway, basically, he comes with a glider that attaches to his backpack and also has a pteranodon in there as well. Um, I w this is awesome. He does not come with a gun, but the whole package, the packaging is full. If you just look at it. You've, like it's like they've had to squeeze in the pteranodon just at the side. They probably could have just left it like that and that would have been okay. But the pteranodon is awesome because it actually, if I remember right, sits in between his head. So it can actually sit on his shoulders. Um, so molding, they did an amazing job. The detail on the pteranodon, I don't know how well you can see it if I zoom in there, but it is beautiful. They've done a really good job with these. So that is three of them. That is, apart from the, yeah, the military commander, for some odd reason, doesn't appear on the back, but he has the same back. This one is the Alan Grant with compies. This one's more sort of movie based because he does actually have like a little leather jacket and blue jeans on. So you get two, these two compies, which are humongous, by the way. Um, and now at the back, we get the diver, Alan Grant and Mr. Kirby setting up a trap for the Stegosaur. Uh, so that is a really, really good one. Two more. This, okay, this one. Now we're getting to the big leagues. This is a pretty badass. I'm gonna say it. Because it comes with the Pteranodon that can actually pick up Eric Kirby. Not even kidding. It's it's big and it's it's like God, I can't even talk. It's wings actually like spread out, so it's even bigger than the box can let it let it be. And as for like a dinosaur, it looks awesome. It's really good. It's got the detail in its face is amazing. Hasbro did a good job here. I'm gonna say they did a really good job. And the final one for this is actually the scuba diver, uh, scuba dan dan, scuba diver dan, <laughs> which comes with a little spinosaur, which is the only recurring uh, creature to come in these packs. Amanda Kirby does also come with a spinosaur. I didn't realize that Amanda Kirby isn't in this set, actually. Um, so these go for crazy prices. Like the diver alone will go for about 40 pound online. And just generic diver, he's not even anything. He does come with flippers, I gotta give him that, and a cool gun. Uh, these are not, the, these guns that came with all of these, or well, some of them, are mostly the ones that clip in and then you push the missile instead of a spring where you can click it and it'll release. And I always felt that was a bit cheap. I felt like I, I was, when I was pushing it, it didn't feel as cool as when you push a button and it fires out. You're actually pushing the missile out and that sort of defeats the illusion I always felt. Um, but this is a cool figure. And there you go. There they all are. Hold on, can we, can we do it? Can we, can we get them all round? So as far as like Jurassic Park goes, these were the last big, like good ones I remember. Um, apart from the React attacks, uh, these ones were by far and large the better ones that came out. And as far as Jurassic World has gone, they did not do anything of the sort. Nothing. They didn't do any sort of human or little baby or gun. And it would have been awesome to have Mr. Mizrani, Chris Pratt, Claire, Hoskins, uh, Barry, and let me think of another one. I feel like I miss, I probably missed a main character. Um, you know, just something like that. And you could have got one, two, three, four, five. Easy, easy done. But uh, they, they didn't and who knows? I feel like they're gonna do a bigger push when Jurassic World 2 comes out because it's gonna be more militarized dinosaurs. And it's pro that's probably what they're gonna end up doing. So now to put these away. This was another steal. It re I was like, I can't believe I got this for this for that much. Um, and we haven't seen this actually, this one yet. So it did come with some freebies. We got a Velociraptor temporary tattoo, 
which I am probably never gonna use, but it's a cool little thing to have. Only $2.99 apparently. And here it is, Ian Malcolm. Beautiful! And it comes with the baby T-Rex. And what's even cooler, even though it's not painted, it does have a bandage on its leg. I, it always confused me when I was a kid, like looking at the box art, like he, he's got a weird head, like a different shaped head, not only that, but he doesn't have glasses. And the T-Rex is a orange instead of a green. And I don't know, I always preferred the orange because the orange was in the box art and that's what was like, ooh, that, that's the right one. And I've got the wrong one. That's how I always felt. But I mean, as far as Ian Malcolm goes, I'd rather have this one. So what is he? He's a chaos expert, apparently. Yeah, there's, there is quite a few differences, like Nick Van Owen had ginger hair originally. Uh, but this is a pretty cool thing. I can I can now see why I got it for cheap because there is bending in it. But apart from that, it's perfect condition. Especially if you just want to, like, what I want to do is give people the opportunity to own these. Whether you want to collect it, whether you want to open it and actually like play with it, which is awesome. Uh, it's because I think kids these days, um, if they've seen Jurassic World, they've probably seen the other movies. At least I'd hope so. And if they have, dude, Ian Malcolm, there he is. Play him with blue, play him with Indominus, make your own scenarios out. You know what I'm saying. So, until the next one. <gasps> oh, <laughs> it's tiny. <laughs> For some odd reason, I half expected this to be huge, like, like that big, but it is actually really small. Um, this is pretty cool. It is the, oh wow, okay, the level of detail is amazing. This is the Jurassic Park resin. Um, logo and it still smells fresh and smell the paint on it, but it looks awesome um, What I was thinking of doing is hanging this on the uh, car inside So the boot would be where all the merchandise is and in between where the back seats are to have this on top And I originally thought that it was gonna be a lot bigger. I thought it was gonna be like That big so it would like take up the whole space really, but uh, no, this is a wonderful bit of um Design that's amazing like you think of Jurassic Park you you see like a skeletal t-rex and bronze sort of quite often I'm not too sure where but it's dotted about and that looks splendid. Oh I'm actually cool. I'm really happy that it is this small actually um, And I'm gonna I'm actually gonna bubble wrap this because uh, I do not Want that to be spoiled because that is fantastic. That's a lovely piece of merchandise Whether it's on it's official or not. I don't really care it looks great. On to another box! Oh, here we go. Here we go, guys. It's the good stuff again. So, first off, we have another Eddie car. Except for this time, I can tell it's English because behind it, it has a Kenner instruction sort of. This is how you use this thing. I'm pretty sure um, the American ones, for some odd reason, didn't get that included. Um, so that is Eddie car. We also have another Dieter stock. Again, it's the one I remember because it has the uh, background with that. So I'll put you there. And one of my favorite dinosaur toys to date, the Pachycephalosaurus. Now it's not like, after I saw that this one actually came out in the Jurassic Park set, I was like, oh, they had so many good dinosaur toys in that one. But I still prefer this one. This is, um. For some odd reason, I think this is quite a rare one because it actually has a red eye. I think the Pachycephalosaurus, oh, does it always have a red eye? Um, there was a few, I think they have yellow and red eyes, but the red ones are rare, I think. The same with the raptors, most of them have yellow eyes, but some of them have green eyes. And the raptors I had had yellow, so I see green as the rare one. But it has a little action button on him where he butts his head. And also you've got, you've got this sort of constrainer sort of um, thing that is demonstrated as the back art always beautifully does. Don't you wish you had that sort of like layout and you could like, oh, set up the dinosaurs or the action figures, but you always just end up doing it on blue carpet or something. <laughs> and so once you click that attack, attack thing, he butts it off. Um, what is it? Code name Ramhead. <gasps> and there you go. That is some Jurassic, I keep saying Jurassic World. 
Lost World Toys. <laughs> oh, is my oh, right, okay. Aha, this is the cable I need to connect my DVD player to my really old TV that's going in the um, in the car. That's the one. But what I found out was that my it's not a TV, it's actually a monitor. And for the time, it was pretty advanced. And with this cable, it's gonna allow me to play the Jurassic Park 2 DVD on um, on that TV. And it's gonna look awesome, I can't wait for it. So that's that down, at least I know what that is. I gotta keep that separate. Oh my God, they wanted to keep good care of it. And it is, again, the Celiophysis, except that this time there is no aging at all on that plastic. Something to be behold when you consider this thing is about 20 odd years old. It is almost the same age as me. Um, in fact, hold on, can we get a date? It is... Oh, collector cards made in Hong Kong. Interesting. Um, oh, also something really cool. In 1993. So it is 20... Part of two, 22, 22 to three years old, Jesus. But on the back, you can see, you see this line here? You can see a clear line of age. Now, obviously it has poked out in the sun at, um, at some point in a collection or in a library. And this is sun faded. So all these years, that's what sunlight does to packaging like this. So that's just a warning for anybody who is a collector that's gonna happen if they're not properly contained or kept away. So obviously like this is, this this part of it was completely um, out of the sun. And obviously if this bit was facing the sun, this bit wasn't, <laughs> so it didn't even bleed through. And the card as well, she has lots of Celia Physis and Ian Malcolm and I think Ellie looking at them run away. And of course, my favorite game, when I was a kid, a little whippersnapper, not really, but when PC games were getting all right graphics, Dino Defender Jurassic Park 3. Dino Defender! I actually don't know whether or not this works on modern day computers. I think it does, but you have to have a Windows, because if you have a Mac, even though it says that it works for Mac, the actual iOS or whatever is out for Mac is too good for these to work, so um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can't play on a Mac, but if you've got Windows, which most people do, then you'll be okay with these. Okay, we are reaching the final, the end of the post so far, and it has been a crazy ride. So we have one, two, three, four, five left. We have this thing, which is a fragile, handled with care, uh, which I thought originally was a DVD, but obviously not. Let's see what this is. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, look at all those. Beautiful. Yeah. These are awesome. They are like, um, sorry, car keys, but they have the Jurassic Park T-Rex on it. And I saw these and I thought, I gotta have it. I gotta have one for my car. I was like, for my car keys, I've gotta have one. Um, and then like, cause they were like awesome. I thought, Let's just get loads. So I have loads of these and they will also be on the shop for you guys to get. This is the, I don't even know what it is. What's it called? The ground tracker vehicle from Lost World. I'm not too sure how, who had this. It might have possibly been um, the Hunters. But from looking at the box art, you've got Nick Van Owen in the back and you've got Ian Malcolm in the front. So I'm guessing it's one of those. And then if you look at the uh, diorama there, you've also got Ian Malcolm, Eddie Carr and Nick Van Owen. But this is a complete car inside here. The box is a bit damaged. It has been opened, but everything inside is complete. You've got the missiles that are somewhere. There they are, the missile and the gun. You have the Pagasivalosaurus that can headbutt off the, de the damage. You've got the lights as well that take some batteries. And you've got a little fold-out seat for other people to go in. And they get look here with the vehicles, If you, you get four points for this one. If you cut that off and send that away, you could have won the mugs. If you were so lucky and lived back in the 1990... Does it have it? It should have a year on it. Hold on. 1990... I'm going to say eight. Is it 1998? I get the feeling it's 998. Well, um, hold on. 1997. Oh, it's close. So close. But this is 
a pretty damn awesome collector. Or even like for a kid to play with like, it's just a shame that we didn't get this with Jurassic World. It really is. I feel like with Jurassic World 2, there's gonna be a bigger push with this stuff. But hey, fingers crossed, maybe there will be. Right, so first off the bat, as that big pile of boxes falls over, we have Ellie Sattler from series one again. Um, again, in perfect condition. Is it English? It is not, this one's in German. Again, these ones are always so much cheaper and I don't know why. <laughs> I really don't. So Ellie Sattler. Um, oh, that's right, because we didn't get them all, did we? No, yeah, here we go. So here we have the original Dennis Nedry, and if my memory serves me correctly, his arms can actually snap off. Well, not snap off, but they can clip in and clip off. As if you can act he can actually lose arms. If it wasn't bad enough that his character died in the movie, you can now decapitate him in toy form. And he also comes with, ironically, a baby Dilophosaur, which does look like the uh, spray Dilophosaur that you can also buy, which is awesome. I love when they do stuff like that. Uh, we also have a Tim Murphy that we've seen before. And, ooh, ooh, wow, well, that's, 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 that's a lot bigger. We also have another Bob Peck, a Robert Muldoon. Um, I would bring up the other one, but I think it's under a big pile of toys over here, so I can't really show it to you. Um, but this is again another rock. You can always go back to the video. I don't know when it was in it. Um, or I might maybe put, a, put up a time code. I don't know. Um, so yeah, he comes with the rocket launchers that are red. Again, the face isn't as good as series two and the clothes either. Uh, but the Raptor is, it's funny, like the Raptor is actually different. I think it's bigger and it's not as colorful as the other one. So this Raptor is probably the cheap one, the baby is the cheap one, and so is the other one actually. But all together look awesome, they look so cool. I'm <laughs> just looking at Tim Murphy's little uh, information and it's got a Brachiosaur being choked. Like, <laughs> yeah, Mr. Tim is from downstairs. Okay, in here, I'm actually going to review these separately, but just to show you what's coming in a future video, the, um, the owners, well, the company Spin Master, sent me these electronic dinosaurs to review. So I'm just gonna give you a quick view of them now. Um, there was supposed to be three, but one of them isn't out in the UK. But the one I'm most excited for is this, and it is Indominus Rex. I'm just gonna get you out of there, put the box down. Oh God! The Indominus Rex, which looks amazing. And I think retail price, it sells for a hundred pound. And what I wanna do is do a giveaway. So we'll try this one out and then we'll give away another one. So if you look out for that video, you could be in with a chance of winning this bad boy. Literally, I think that's what it was codenamed. So that's pretty cool. Oh yes! Oh my God, there's, there's tissue and things everywhere. So, they're all wrapped up. Um, oh my god, there's so much. This is awesome. Uh, oh, we have the little Tyrannodon that comes with the first series, Alan Grant. We also have the Dilophosaur, which also comes with um, Dennis Nedry. Tim Murphy's uh, Brachiosaur. Oh, it's so awesome to like see them out. And Ellie Sattler's solid. Triceratops, it is, it's really solid actually. It's like a big clump of plastic. Um, oh, sorry, I forgot. And Robert Muldoon's Raptor. Ellie Sattler's back, little backpack thing. So that goes with the Triceratops. You can wear it. Um, as well as the, oh my God, so many bits of rope. Jesus. Um, that's, well, we've got Robert Muldoon's thing. We've got that. We've got, actually, that's all of them. That's all of them. Let's just go there. Otherwise, we'll be here forever. And I can see things that look a lot cooler and something I've never had, ever. So lots of tissue. Oh yeah, oh yeah, let's get this out. Let's get this out. So here, yeah, there it is. It is the Land Explorer. Looking a little bit worse for wear. Some stickers coming off. There is also, I think, a, uh, oh, there it is. I was wondering where it had gone. It's, uh, it's front. Um, What'd you call it? Bush guards, there you go. So it looks awesome. It is a little bit um, dingy because, I mean, it's second hand. What do you expect? It's like ancient, uh, but it has a little crack in here. Um, it comes with the missiles, which is awesome. The little camera on top as well. Um, 
And what's even better, what's quite rare for these to have, is the um, the back of it. Because I have one of these and it doesn't have this. And that shows the missile launcher that can come out. And then you put in one of the DNA dart samples. Now what this, <laughs> this is quite actually really awesome. Uh, inside, you see it's red, that means it's got the DNA in it. But if you put it inside its holster, it resets it. So the DNA no longer, oh, hold on. I don't think I clicked it properly. There you go. So there, the DNA no longer exists. So you need to get more samples. So that's how you would collect it. And then you see it's clicked in. And then once you put it in the launcher and you fire it, which I'm gonna try to do without it killing me. Or can it? Oh, yes it can. And there you go, as soon as it fires out, it has the DNA sample as if it's hit the thing. And I think that's really cool that they just did their own thing with it, Hasbro did. And of course it comes with its uh, dino damage bit that can come off. So that's really cool. Um, but the big one we're here for is this guy. I've never owned one of these ever. The T-Rex, the big one, the one every kid wanted growing up. And this is, oh my God, feeling it. Oh. Feels so beautiful. <laughs> like it's all rubber, which is like Indominus's, uh, Indominus Rex's neck. Um, and there you go, there's its biting action. I think it might need new batteries. All of them had a little bit of a crooked tail, uh, as you can see here. It looks a bit odd if I just put it there. But ah, oh, it looks so cool. Um, I, I have no words for this. This is the one that en encumbers everything that is Jurassic Park. It has movable arms. Which are quite widespread, I will say, uh, but it also has stopping action so that when you rah, do that, then it'll make a noise. But obviously, I need to unscrew it and uh, put some batteries in. But this, sells, again, it sells for ridiculous amounts online. Um, I'm gonna put you down. And we do have dinosaurs, we have some other loose ones, we have um, like pteranodons, the Dilophosaur. Things that you've sort of already seen. And I'm not gonna start getting that out because that is crazy. But that has been this video. If you've enjoyed it, leave a like. And if you've had any sort of nostalgia blasts, like if you remember any of these dinosaurs from when you were a kid, don't forget to leave it down in the comments below. I try to read everyone I can. And this for me has been amazing. I've loved opening everyone. Each one has been a surprise and better than the last, as cliche as that sounds. But again, guys, Thank you for watching. I've been the Game Beaver, and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye bye.